my concern about how Western medicine is utilized is based on one concept. And if you ask me what that one concept is, it's simply terminology, ironically. If you were to ask me what is the one issue that really makes Western medicine, unfortunately, for the last hundred years or so, miss the mark, it's the misunderstanding of two terms and confusion about those terms. And those terms are disease and symptom. So I'm going to go into a concept with you as a group of people getting your first treatment today about the body and about symptoms and about disease. And the true problem in my experience with conventional Western medicine lies in the fact that a doctor views the symptom and the disease as the same thing. And they are not. We have patients that come into this clinic and they're uh, trying to become pregnant and they're told that they have a disease, a diagnosis, known as infertility. Now that is a complete misstatement. The truth of the matter is, is they have a symptom which is known as infertility for whatever reason. And there's an underlying cause that is the reason. A breakdown in function, an issue with hormones, where the body is struggling to be able to conceive and carry to full term. And that is the disease pattern that underlies the symptom. And this is where the whole problem exists. If you try to treat infertility and you do not go after the underlying cause, the underlying cause will continue to eat away at that body. Even if you're able to circumvent and get the body to conceive, that underlying cause will continue to eat away at that body. And 10 years down the road, there will be additional problems that Unfortunately, the medical doctors do not see are related to that lack of ability to conceive originally. Let's talk about migraines. Doc, I wanted to know, I have this pain in my head, what is the diagnosis? Well, Mr. Jones, you have a condition known as migraines. Aha. Why do I have migraines? Well, Mr. Jones, you have a problem with your optic nerve and it's causing issues with circulation. That's leading to your pain. Okay. Why do I have a problem? Now this is what patients don't ask. You see, you've got to take it one step further. Why do I have a problem with circulation in my temple and that problem with the nerve behind my eye? Well, Mr. Jones, you have a condition known as migraines. Do you understand how that goes? Do you understand the circular logic that they're stuck in? And it becomes a dog chasing its, its tail. You know, you have this person treating the symptoms, treating the symptoms, treating the symptoms, treating the symptoms, not realizing that in addition to there being a head on this person's shoulders, that has the pain, there happens to be a body below it. And there are connections from the body below the head to the head causing the imbalance. And that the liver has 600 functions. For example, there's many different causes for migraines. I'm not trying to mislead you. What I'm saying is that in a fair number of cases, the liver, which is something that controls the function of the eyes and is connected to the gallbladder, and the gallbladder has a referral system either the meridian system or some circulatory pattern or the dermatomes in the nervous system that go into the head and cause pain when it goes south. When it's lost enough function, then it's below 40%. That's when we start having issues. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to clarify this for you. I'm going to make sure that you understand that the body does develop symptoms for a reason and how those symptoms develop and why they develop. So let me take a minute to draw this diagram for you, and I'm going to go over it. 
So you could call this the body, organ, and blood diagram if you wanted. You could call it the uh, body and energy diagram. And again, I'm very grateful uh, for myself and for my patients to have learned from Dr. Singer this particular concept, which is probably the clearest way of explaining how people develop symptoms that I've ever seen. <clears throat> all right, so first of all, you have the organ system. Secondly, you have circulation. Circulation. Almost misspelled that. This is again why you should have a case manager. <clears throat> The body is made up fundamentally of two systems. And those two systems include the organ system, of which the Chinese developed uh, concepts about 12 of them. And of course, the glandular system would fall under this category. The muscular system would fall under this category. The nervous system falls under this category. Uh, the skeletal system fits under this category. Pretty much everything that we're talking about structurally in the body is determined to a certain degree and interrelated with the organ system. Secondly, you have circulatory function. This is blood and energy traveling everywhere in the body. There's nutrients, hormones, oxygen, etc., traveling to every area of the body so that it can heal itself when in trouble, which in your case, unfortunately, it stopped doing. Essentially, the body is made up simply of two basic systems from the point of view of oriental medicine, which seems to be in our experience, one of the more accurate views of the body. If all of these systems are working, your body will function optimally. So now this is you doing great. You're a kid. You had a full deck of cards when you were born, great genetics, fantastic shape. All right. Then things start to happen. We talked about these things on your last visit. Mental, emotional stresses, physical stresses and trauma, dietary, chemical, environmental, all the things on the outside of your body that move into your body. And these things start to impact the body and break down function and break down function. And you had optimal function and that starts to slip and that leads to malfunction that malfunction is simply a loss of normal function but you have no symptom at that point now the problems that you have with your acid reflux you had mentioned started 15 years ago this was in development far before that. The stomach and what we found in your case, the relationship of the stomach, and there's this, uh, you know, what we call inflammation, you know, is developing over time, and there's these problems with circulation into the stomach, and, you know, problems are occurring and things are getting rough. No symptoms occur, but you've got a breakdown. If you don't stop that breakdown, it's going to continue going downward. And you will move into a state where there is a disease process. The disease process is that process that you cannot see. And thankfully, via the pulses and the tongue, your acupuncturist can observe. So that observation of the disease process is extraordinary. And that's why the pulses and the tongue are the most important diagnostic tools, in my opinion, that have been given to mankind. So you have this disease process under the surface, causing these issues, starting to develop. There's still no acid reflux. And then eventually what happens is the straw that breaks the camel's back occurs, and you drop below 40% of normal. 
And when you drop below 40% of normal, is the first time that you ever experienced a symptom. At this moment, you should be experiencing your patient having a significant realization. And that is that they have lost function and there's an underlying issue that needs to be resolved. So the symptom is the thing that shows you there's an issue. The disease process is the issue that's underneath the surface. This is like poured concrete. It's unchangeable without intervention because it's so stuck. It's a habit pattern that the body has. The symptom is the thing that shows you that something exists and that is all it is. It's a little message to you that something's happening. This is the iceberg tip above the water. This is the iceberg the size of the World Trade Center before it went down that sank the Titanic. So you have to understand the importance of getting to the disease process, restoring function, and getting the body to heal itself, and resolving the issues here of lack of function and the pattern that the body's stuck in to go after the symptom. And we are a wellness clinic. We go after this by resolving the issues of function and the disease pattern, going after the organs and circulation and restoring their normal activity. We have these issues working, those things don't exist. So this is the key to understanding what acupuncture does and how it works. So now what I wanted to do is ask all of you who are here, if you have anything you wanted to go over, if you need to use the restroom, because right now we are about to do something revolutionary in your life, and that's go back into the treatment area. Now, you could do the treatment beforehand if you want. They get very relaxed. The point is, is it's good to have them understand what's going on. And if you experience patients going through healing reactions, I would recommend, uh, you know, clarifying what a healing reaction is so they know, you know, exactly what's occurring and why the healing reactions are happening. Uh, there's other things that you may want to train your uh, patients on so they understand what it is that you're dealing with. And you may want to clarify several things about what the acupuncture is doing through the course of that treatment and so on. These are the key concepts that you want to cover. Um, you know, and that body and energy diagram, in my opinion, is probably critical. Uh, as a step of understanding. As I said, there are 149 steps to bring your average American to the point where they say, okay, I need to do something about this. That right there was a huge piece. And that right there was probably one of the more important of the 149 steps.